Today I'm going to show you how to take a workflow that looks like this and turn it into something that looks more like this. Welcome back to the channel where we discuss the creative uses of AI and if you are a creator of comfy UI workflows and would love to be able to share your brilliance with the world but understand that it can be kind of scary for the layman to look at, I've got a couple of really cool pieces of information for you. As I teased in the beginning, I want to show you a way to create a front-end interface for your comfy UI workflows that will allow the average user to be able to use them and once you create this user-friendly interface, you can actually sell the usage of these apps for a profit. This is all made possible by our sponsor Mimic PC, a regular sponsor of the program because they allow you to run these high-end AI applications on remote servers that can offer you more GPU power and processing power than you may currently have, or just to add computing power to your workflow. Before we go too deep on this, I want to qualify exactly who this is for. First of all, you need to be a creator of Comfy UI workflows. You understand how they all work and how to put them together, but I would imagine that part goes without saying. In order to make money from these things, you do need to have your own system for taking money and distributing what will be redemption codes. And I'm well aware that a lot of you don't have payment systems like this. You could do something as easy as PayPal or have a full customer relations management system. Either way, the process will be that you make these workflows available, you take the money for them, and then give them a redemption code, which gives them access to your application. And finally, this is a program that Mimic is currently testing, and it is not yet available to all users. But it is something that you might want to keep your eye on if you create really cool workflows and would like to see some profit from that. I'm going to show you just a couple of examples, one fairly simple and one a little bit more complicated on how this works. And then I'm going to tell you about still another way that you as a creator of workflows can earn some cash for your work. This is the back end of my Comfy UI account. I have several machines here that I can run and they do a variety of things. Right now I'm running this Honeywin image to video generator and when it's running it looks like this. It's not the most complicated workflow you've probably ever seen, but if you were to show this to somebody who had no idea what Comfy UI was about, they would probably run screaming like I did when I first saw it. But when you boil down the functionality of this thing, all it really requires is an input image, a prompt, and if you'd like the frame count. But you could actually give users access to every parameter on here, but that really defeats the purpose of making it simple, doesn't it? To turn this into an easy to use app, you're going to use this button up here, pack as AI generator. But before you do that, I recommend that you make note of the nodes that you're actually going to be referencing or giving the user access to so that you can easily find them in the list that will soon be presented. In this case, we have the load image node. We have the high video I2V encode node, which contains the prompt. And the frame setting takes place in the Honeywin video sampler. So the Honeywin video sampler, the high video I to V encode, and the load image. So let's click pack as AI generator to just give you a little bit of information. Click pack as new AI generator again. And you actually should close the app before you do this, but I forgot to do that. But it will do it automatically if you do forget. So just confirm. It'll close that app up. And here's where you design the front end. First of all, you're going to choose the default hardware. It's a Honeywin video workflow. So we're going to go pretty big on the Ultra Pro here. You can choose whatever you'd like. And this number here is what you believe to be the maximum generation time based on your experience with this setup that any generation would take so we can make sure that the machine stays on and also to evaluate the potential cost. You'll see here that the estimated cost per generation right now is 60 cents given the Ultra Pro and an estimate that it might take 15 minutes to run that particular generation. If I was to take this down to say 10, you'll notice now that the estimated cost is 40 cents. But I have learned from experience that you want to overshoot rather than undershoot because I've gotten some errors if I don't give it enough time. Even if my experience is that five minutes, for example, would be enough time. When I put five minutes as the maximum time, I was getting some errors. So once I put it back up to 15, it worked fine. And the worst thing that happens is they don't pay as much as they thought they were going to pay. So now we want to choose the input parameters. What is it that they're going to be able to interact with? So we click on select input parameters. And now we have access to everything on the entire workflow, every parameter that can be changed. And it may look daunting, but it's actually pretty cool and easy in this case because we only need three, right? So anything we check here is going to be presented on the screen for the user to potentially tweak. So we'll scroll down here to the high video I to V encode, and we're going to click prompt because we want them to be able to enter a prompt. We scroll down to load image because we want them to load an image. And then under the Honeywin video sampler, we can choose to give them access to the number of frames. Once we've chosen everything we want them to have access to, we click on confirm. And now we can change the order that they're presented. In this case, I'm going to want the input of the image up at the top, and then the prompt, and then the frame number. You'll notice here we have mark this parameter as an advanced setting. So if I go over here and look at the parameter preview, this is what they're going to see currently. They'll have the load image and then they'll have to click advanced settings to see these other two. 
well, we don't really need these to be in advanced settings, so we can just click these off. Maybe the frames we could put in advanced settings. We'll do that. So now we have the input image, the prompt, and then under advanced settings, we can have frames. Right now it's defaulted to 73 frames, which results in a three second video. So now we just go to the next step and we're going to name the generator. We will say simple image to video and just any image for the icon. I'll just choose one of these images here. You can of course zoom in, you can rotate, you can do whatever you want to here. Describe the AI generator and I'll just say again, a simple Hunyuan image to video generator. And again, this is where you would put a sample of the output. I'm just going to choose any image here and click on OK. And then click Next Step. And just like that, it's done. And we can now share it with others by generating a code by clicking this button here. And you can determine how many codes you want to generate and then how many uses they get from this code. We'll just go with the defaults here. And one code is successfully generated. And now we can copy the code or copy the link that would send the users to this workflow. So for example, if I now paste that link in here, I need to redeem the code. And now I have access to the workflow. So let's give it a try. Let's load an image. We'll start with this one here. We can actually adjust the aspect ratio here with the slider, which is pretty cool. Click OK. And now we just give it a prompt man holding a lemon is talking to the camera. If I wanted to change the number of frames, I could do that here, but I'm not going to. It tells me right here I have five uses left and I'm going to click on generate. Now, this is a Hunyuan image to video process. It's going to take a hot minute, but you can track the progress here. While this is generating, let's just talk about the business side of this a little bit. Obviously, if you're going to make money on this, you're going to charge more to the customer for the uses of this workflow than it's costing you to run each generation. So if the maximum cost of the generation is 60 cents, you might want to charge a dollar or whatever you want to charge for this. Now, that may not be a practical example in this case, but you get the general idea. Here we have our results. First of all, we have the original image that was put in there, but now we also also have the video result. We'll download that so we can play it full size. So there you go, man holding a lemon, a little squishy here at the bottom. So I wouldn't call this a perfect generation and with some expertise you could certainly add more advanced settings into this for people who know how to use it and tweak it but for a quick generation, this is pretty cool. Let's look at one that's way more complicated and scary looking. Now, this is a workflow that I've shared on the channel before. In essence, it creates an image of an AI influencer, if you will, and then animates it and then gives it some audio. There's lots and lots of nodes and different things you can tweak, and it can be extremely confusing and intimidating for somebody, even if, once again, the actual functionality and what you need to do is fairly simple. So let's do the same process here. But before we do, let's note a couple of things. Remember that you're generating output that they need to be able to download. So no preview nodes in here. Everything needs to be a save node. Otherwise, it doesn't get saved and doesn't get presented and you will get a failure. For example, with the video, we output a video with no sound and we output a video with sound. And so we have save output true on both of those. At the beginning, we're also going to generate an image of our influencer and that also needs to be a save image node and not a preview node. For this example, even though we could have access to all of these things and give them the ability to tweak them, we're going to set some default parameters here because that's what's going to translate over into our AI generator. So for example, for age group here, I'm just going to say adult rather than senior so that that will be the default. If something is disabled, that means that it will not put anything on there. It will use the model or whatever the prompting you have to inform the final image. Otherwise, if you have something specific here chosen, for example, a lighting situation, that will be what's transferred over. So although we could give them access to so many different parameters here, literally everything you see here, we're going to keep this as simple as possible and let them choose whether it's a woman or a man and choose their clothing. So really, we're only giving them access to a couple of fields here in the flux prompt generator. And in addition, to the gender and the clothing, we will also allow them to change the dimensions of the image, whether it's portrait, landscape. They'll be able to type in specific numbers here. Again, we need to stop the application before we can make a generator out of it. I'll click on Pack as AI Generator. Click through here again. We'll go through the same process. I'm going to go Ultra Pro. We'll leave it at 15 minutes and we'll select Input Parameters. Now again, we have a long list of things we could choose, but we're only going to choose those few things that we selected. And I think spur of the moment here, I want to add the ability to prompt the sound that is generated in here as well. So since I'm right here, I'm going to go ahead and check this prompt. This is the prompt box for the generator. That's all I need to put. The empty latent image, we want to be able to adjust the width and the height. Because we're making a video and with audio, we can only generate one image at a time. So we don't want them to have access to a batch size. And here we have the 
Flux Prompt Generator, and we're going to go with default tags because that's where you would choose man or woman. It really doesn't matter, but that's where we're going to choose it. And we'll also click clothing so they can specify that. So now we have width, height, the gender, the clothing, and prompting the audio. So let's click confirm. We'll move these around however we want. Let's see, we want the, the sound thing at the bottom. We'll put the gender thing, the default tags up at the top and we will relabel this to say gender. It is not an advanced setting. Width and height are pretty much self-explanatory. They're also not advanced settings. Remember, they're going to be plugged in with the default values that you had on the workflow, and then change this to sound prompt, and click on next step. And we'll call this avatar generator with video and sound. Once again, we'll just choose a couple of default images here. Create a random AI fluencer and make them move and make noise. And again, just another random image. Click on next step. All right, it says it's done. Let's give it a try. We'll click on try your AI generator. And here we have gender, width, height. Oh, I guess I chose this uh, clothing under advanced settings. I need to go uncheck that, which I can do just by clicking on edit up here. Go uncheck these, click on next step again, and try your AI generator and now everything is there. So you end up with a much simpler interface to a pretty complicated workflow. And speaking of AI influencers, another way for you to get your creativity out there and make a little cash in doing so is to enter their Comfy UI AI Influencer Workflow Contest. Three different levels of prizes, including $800 being featured on the platform, $300, $100 being all being featured on the platform, and they're looking for anything related to AI influencers. AI influencer design, whether you're animating an AI influencer or you're doing doing an AI influencer for ads. Note that it's going to be judged on how popular that workflow is, how many times it's been used, how well you describe it, how easy it is to use, and of course, it's got to be original, no plagiarizing. They point you to some example workflows to give you some inspiration, and all the other information about the contest is available at the link in the description below. If learning how to develop and share your creativity in the AI space is something you're interested in, well, why not subscribe to this channel? Because this is the type of stuff we talk about all the time. If you subscribe now, I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you do not, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will...